Okay, last time, quick recap. The idea was is we started by saying what is it that we want from first principles, right? So we said input is this picture on the left, output is the moment of inertia, uh, and the main three steps are find the centroid, rotate the global coordinate system, and uh, then use some sort of integration to get the mass properties. So that mass properties would give us the ix and iy, and because we rotated it to the global coordinate system, it would give it to us in the proper direction, right? Then we started to look and we moved, we said, well, well, how does that apply to the computer? What is the data that's coming in here and how will that affect um, what we give it? So we said, well, maybe we've been given this on the left and then we inspect what this is on the left from what it is digitally. It is two surfaces, right? So that automatically started to change our algorithm because now instead of just one picture that we're talking about in the abstract, we're talking about two pieces of data, which means that if we want to find the centroid from the first one, we'd actually be finding two centroids. And then we had said, well, we got to get back to one because physically this thing acts structurally as one thing. So we need to get down to one centroid and then one moment of inertia in the X and one moment of inertia in the Y, right? So we had said our plan was is to find the centroid of each piece, which would be two points. Then we'd take those two points, make a line, and find the midpoint of that line, and we'd get one point. Right? So that's where we're at right now in terms of planning. Okay? So we go back to our script. Um, so I'm going to start being very clean with the way we build this script. So step one is find centroid, right? So I'm just going to type that in here, find centroid. So this is a little... A thing called scribble. So if you double click the canvas and you select scribble, scribble right there is what you would use so that we can start being very clean, right? And last time we talked about this is very important that we learn how to find the answers rather than just me telling you, oh, here's all the buttons up here because there are thousands of buttons and there are always new ones coming out. So for me to teach you the buttons is really a stupid thing to do, right? So if I want to find something centroid, what's one of the first things that I can try and do from last week? How do you help yourself? Like now we've gotten it. We said first thing that will help you is to break down exactly what you want to do into very succinct steps. So now actually, I go step one, find st centroid. Step two, draw a line. Right? Step three. Get midpoint of line. Those are all pretty easy things to do, right? Or they're easy, at least simple steps. There's not much more to them, right? So, first things first, find centroid. If I, last week we talked about you need to be able to find the answers yourself. You said, okay, if I got to go bump medial on the shoulder, Right? You could ask me what it is, right? But that's not very sustainable because then I need to sit there next to you all the time. How did I learn? How does everybody most likely learn is there's two main ways. One, double click and Google search here, centroid. Not very hard, right? And just kind of looking at this, this comes up with a bunch of things. But if we hover, gets the triangular centroid from all the medians. Doesn't sound right to me. I don't know about you guys. Retrim. And you could go through all this and you could say, I want a function that basically takes in a surface and spits me out a point. And I can look at all of these and kind of tell you this isn't what these are doing. I could even test it and I could say, well, I already know I want to put in one thing and I want to get out two points. This is giving me all this other stuff so it can't be right. So what was the other thing to do? Google search, again, but Google search on grasshopper3d.com. And you'd say, get centroid of surface. Did I spell centroid right? How to get the center point for any shape. Sounds good to me. Anyone have any idea? Posted back in 2011. Try the area tool. Okay, not even going to go any further. Try the area tool. Where would I find the area tool? Double click that canvas and type the word area. And sure enough, he even told us what the emoji would say. He said metered squared on the internet. He said M squared, right? And if we look at this one, area, he got little meter squared emoji. 
area comes down, right? And if we want to know what this thing does, we hover over the black part. We say area is, what does it say? Solve the area of B reps, meshes, and planar closed curves. Do we have, so what does that mean? You give him a B rep, a mesh, or a planar closed curve. And what does he give you? Area of the geometry and the centroid, which is what we've been looking for. Which one out of these? Do we have any of these? B rep, uh, B rep, mesh, or planar closed curves? What is a B rep? Do we remember? I think we went over that last week. It could be a polysurface. It could be a surface, right? It could be, you know, those things, right? It could be a polysurface or a surface. It's just a different word for them, right? So if we look at that and we say that's probably the one, so if we place these in there right away, I think last week it was you, Lily, who had said we're going to have two pictures, two lines, like two points like that pretty much. I thought maybe we, maybe we kind of sketched a little bit. But now if you look at your, your, your grasshopper or your rhino, you should see two points have popped up. That's exactly what we expected. So from two surfaces, again, remember the green green mode here, if I click green mode, I only see the stuff that I'm clicking. So I'm going to hide the input here, right? So if you guys look, I can grab all the stuff in Rhino, and I can hide it with this light bulb button. And then the only things now that I see are on Grasshopper. So if I turn this button on, I see everything that's here. If I grab the stuff, it turns green. If I don't, it's red. If I turn this button on, I only see the stuff that I click. Right? So nothing over here right now. I can't select any of the stuff because it's just a preview of what is in Grasshopper. So you have to start thinking of things like this. Right here, literally right here, if I turn this on, this thing is what normally you'd be used to sort of clicking on and being able to touch. But you're not touching him anymore. You're just putting him in here and you're using something else to create these, right? So if this was if this was CAD, you'd be used to coming in here, grabbing this guy, typing in uh, centroid or something, and he'd spit out for you two things here. In this case, you're actually, what you click is stuff over here, and what's generated for you, it generates the rest for you, right? So no longer, if you have this script from, from now and the rest of time, you'll never have to type in, get me the area or get me the centroid, because this guy will do it for you forever. Okay? I'm going to pull out a data bucket. Yeah, go ahead. What is the yellow mark? What's this guy? Yes. This guy's a useful tool. You say panel. Right? And what he does is he just displays to you a text-based representation. So just a piece of text that tells you what is inside of something. So for instance, if I pulled it here, he would tell me as a piece of text what this is right here. Now, for this one, it works pretty well because he tells me it's a referenced B rep. It's a B rep, which was a surface or a polysurface, that is in Rhino somewhere. That's useful information because at least I know where it came from. But here, if I want to describe to you a point, do I say, hey, Lily, there's a point in this room and it's at coordinate 555, comma, 355 comma 1. No. For geometrically based things, it's much better just to use the visual interpretation of things to see things. Equally, you can put this out there and see exactly what's going on at every stage. Okay, so Lily, or sorry, um, Wan Ling, you didn't go in here and you didn't reference it. So I have referenced B reps, right? Remember last week we did the thing where we went in there and we said set multiple geometries, right? So you need to tell Grasshopper that those things are there. He doesn't know. Okay, so those are very useful skills right there because uh, it's a good question. The, the yellow thing is a panel. The panel will help you understand what's going on, okay? Uh, and hovering like this, hovering like this, hovering like this, you will get into the habit of hovering over everything because there's useful information that is coming up every time I hover over an input, an output, or the component itself. Okay? So, 
let's go back to our drawing board here. We said we have two surfaces. We're going to find the centroid. We're going to get two points. The next thing is going to be is to draw a line between those two points, right? This is your introduction to list-based design. Because at this point, what you may not have realized is, is we're not, we're dealing with lists of information. At this point, yes, to the screen, on the screen, we just see a picture. But to the computer, it's a list of information, right? And that information happens to be two B reps. If I click on this one, he gives me a preview, again, a picture of two points on the left. But really, what he's showing me is two, a, two points in a list. There is a list of information. Okay, does that make sense? So right here, at this point in the script, again, when I click on this, this guy, he is giving me an area, and he's giving me a centroid. Well, the area is not something you can visualize. It's just a number, right? But if I click him, I can see the centroid. So I'm going to put a data bucket out here, just to be clear. Again, these buckets, they just contain information. These are the centroids. Everybody see that? You double click, type data, put it out there. You right click it, you can type in centroids. So let's get in this habit of uh, putting down just a bucket of data. Data, right click, and type in what you want it to be. So for instance, for this next part of it, I'm going to group it. I want to put in centroids, and I want to get out a line, right? Am I making that up? No, we've already made that decision. We want to put in two points and we want to get out one line. So let's be clean as we script things. Let's make sure that we kind of understand where we're headed. All right, so everybody try right now to put on their screen what I have right now. Ah, yes. Why have you got four outputs? I think for mine, I already deleted it because I'm a little bit ahead of you. But effectively, if you do this, grab all of this, what does it say up here? You see up here where I'm grabbing? What does it say up there for you when you just grab everything? Oh, so you referenced, so you went over here to geometry, you right clicked, and if you do this right now, what does it say here? The panel. You have four items, right? Yes. But you referenced in, we said we were going to do this script for two surfaces, but you've given it two surfaces and two curves. So you inputted the wrong thing. And that's a huge, huge, huge uh, thing going forward, is garbage in, garbage out, is the, is, the t is the golden rule. We had said, and garbage is defined by us, we said we're creating something that takes in two surfaces. We did not say we're going to have something that takes in two surfaces, five polylines, and three smiley faces, right? It was just two surfaces. So this thing cannot, if you're going to match what I have, you have to put in the same stuff. So what you'd want to do is only select, don't do something like this, select just shift select it, and then go set multiple geometries. So you should see two reference B reps here at this point in the script. You should be putting down scribbles, so you double click and you say scribble, right? So what you can do uh, um, is actually just, you can say cell surface, and then it will only select the two surfaces that are there. Equally, you could zoom right in and just do a shift select, right? Sometimes if, if things are too close, it, try, it doesn't know what to do. But you, you've been given, like you always will be given, junk information. You've been given a curve. And you've been given a surface for each one of these things that look like to you one, two. They're not. The computer sees something different. So when you, are you trying to do it? So if you have something selected over here already, 
So let's say I wanted to go reference multiple things, and I go reference multiple geometries. He doesn't let you in because you already have something selected. So he's, he's assuming that whatever you have selected autom is what you want. Right? So it's either you grab both and you do set multiple geometries, or you say set multiple geometries with nothing selected, and then you come out here and you do it. Right? So if you do cell surface, it says two surfaces added, and then you come over here and you say set multiple geometries, they go in. Say cell surface. No, no, cell surface. S E L. S E L surface. That's the that's the command to select surfaces that are in your Rhino model. Uh, cell surface. S R F. Sorry, I was saying I'm saying things that are actually are not. Look up here, guys. S E L S R F. This is just a little bit of Rhino for you. Rhino commands. You ladies all speak way more languages than me. I think you guys are going to be easy to learn the language of Rhino and. Uh, the language of uh, grasshopper. And then, now you can go and say right click and then say say multiple geometries. All right, and then use your panel. You can use your panel to see what you actually grabbed. Good luck, are you good? See what I mean? If we don't, if we don't practice outside of here, we'll never get this done in, even in a year's time, even if we're coming in here every day. Scribble. Scribble. S C R I B B L E. And then you scribble, double click, type some stuff. You can make it real big if you want to. You can make it all fancy. And then if you want to create uh, this purple stuff, right? If you want to do that, I'm just going to put something else here. You grab a few things. You hit your middle mouse wheel. So your middle mouse wheel goes down. You'll see a window like this. And then you'll click this group button. The middle mouse wheel you hit. Oh, this, this green one. This guy. See how it says group? You can change the color by right-clicking it and sort of playing with it. Nice, right? You can make it nice and pretty. Okay. Let's move on. Okay. So we're in step two, and we're saying we want to take, we, want, we have centroids, and we want to get a line. Right? So first things first, to draw a line in, in AutoCAD, what would you do? You would literally click this, click this, click this, enter. That would be, you know, this isn't rocket science. You guys have done this before. So if it's that easy in AutoCAD, it should not be that hard in Grasshopper, right? So if I want to draw, let's go back to what we just covered. For each one of these boxes, we're going to ask the same questions. I want to draw a line. What is the first thing that I try and do? No, no, no. So we need a tool now, right? We need Grasshopper to help us draw a line. So how do we find tools that will help us draw a line? Double click the canvas, yeah, right? Double click and type Google search line. Everybody try that. So that comes up with a whole bunch of stuff, right? And everybody right now, there's a lot of different tools. Which one are you going to use? So everybody give a shot to drawing a line without me telling you which one it is. So this is a skill in determining which tool you should use based on the description, the inputs, what you have, what you don't.
can't find the centroids. But you don't need the centroid, right? You already have. So well, you're, you already have the centroid. This guy. Yes. So he's just data. You just type data. And he's just a bucket of information. And centroids, is, and I spelled it wrong here, is just if you right-click that, if you look here one link, right-click him, and then you can type here whatever you want. Okay. But that, that's a way for me to tell you, here's what you have. All right. Has anybody tried to draw a line yet? So line, again, he has so many options for us. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. Like, how do you determine, how would you determine if line SDL is the right one? one line? What are you going to do? No. You double click, you do, uh, oh, the answer online? Yeah. So, grasshopper3d.com, or... We can help ourselves here, but I think we can help ourselves here before we go to the internet. Remember last time we said, let's search for centroid. We didn't find anything, so we went to the internet. This time, we're finding a whole bunch of stuff that say the word line in it. And there's little emojis to help us, and there's also, just like last time, if we hover right there, so look at my screen, it says line, SDL. There's a li little emoji, right? You guys know, I'm a... Emoji is a is, is a well known term, right? Okay, I don't know. Um, this little emoji here it has a little picture that gives us a clue. But then also we speak English. We say create a line segment. That sounds good. Defined by a start point, a tangent, and a length. Defined by. So what's he going to ask for? Most likely, I don't even have to click him. What's he going to ask for? A start point, a tangent, and a length. Do we really have that? If I click on him, what does he ask for? A start point, a tangent, and a length. That's nice. That will create a line, right, from first principles. But that's not what we have. We have two points. So we would prefer a line component that takes in two points and creates a line. Yeah. Lily found it, right? Yeah. One link. Can you find it? <laughs> Which one is it? Okay. Which one? This one. Why? Create a line between two points. Oh, it couldn't be more clear. That's beautiful when it works like that. Plus, it also shows us the little emoji with uh, two points, right? Boom. Okay. We have two points here. We want a line. And here's a guy who promises us the sky and the moon. And he says, give me those two points and I'll give you a line. And Oh, boy, we're excited. So what are we going to do? See, someone's already done what I would have done when I first started. So I said, oh, A and B, point A, point B, and I get nothing out. Yeah. I don't see anything on the screen. So I go and take a panel, right? I want to say, I don't see anything. So what are you doing, Mr. Computer? And it says line of length, zero, zero. So yes, we've said we've gotten the centroid, and then you're doing exactly what I'm doing right now, right? Yeah. Oh, you're doing exactly what I'm doing. I'm saying, well, Medio said that there's two points here. This guy's asking for points, so let me give him points, right? And he doesn't work. Why doesn't he work? Again, we have to be careful. Let's pay attention to what he wants. First of all, you're, you're typing in uh, A. A is the area. You don't want to put in A. See here? I only took from this guy. This guy gives you multiple outputs. He gives you the area and the centroid. Do I care about the area? No. So that's why he's only come forward. You, you only have one centroid coming out? There is two centroids. If I click on this, see there's two? Because I've given it two surfaces. So guys, so here's where, again, understanding what this thing does is important. And he tells you what he wants. Give me a start point. 
give me a endpoint. But look at what we've given him. Can you guys all see that? It says we've given him two endpoints. And we've given him two start points. So we want to give him two objects and get one. But what we've done pretty much, I'm going to start drawing now. What we've done effectively, oops, is we have this bucket, it has inside of it two points, right? And this guy, the line component, says, I will, now remember, a line is literally one point to another point, right? So this guy, and you'll have to learn this, most grasshopper components, you will give them an input. You'll always be giving them inputs, right? Now, if I give this guy over here and this guy over here, right? Let's see if I can get my pen to work. I'm not drawing like a caveman. Ah, that's why. You've given it two points, but he can only take one point at a time, point A to B here. So grasshopper components, they always, if you give them a list, not just one thing at a time. Remember, this is a list. What they do is they do usually say, give me, this is item one and this is item two, right? Take for this input, take item one and connect it for this input to item one right? So this is, let's say, A and this is B. A and B. And this is index, right? So take what's in the list here for A and use also what's in the list here for B, right? So inevitably, why are we getting lengths of zero for our lines because what you're doing is you are for if both of them come in what he's doing is he's saying ah so I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna set him to point A and then he's saying I'm gonna take this guy again and I'm gonna send him to point B so actually the picture looks more like AB right on top of each other right Bing. yes that's what he wants and right now, we're giving him a list of information where really what we want to do is we want to take this list. Again, the list has indices A and B. So 0, 1 is the way the computer counts it. What we want to do is to give him A and B come into here. That's not what we're doing right now. You don't have that. What you're doing is you're... You're giving him both. And the way we see that is if we hover here, there's two and two. So we split that into two points then? Yes. Well, split the list, be more specific, split the list into two lists, basically. Instead of it, one list with two items, right? So we want to go from a list with this and this to two lists, again, list, we, uh, we'll do it like a box, right? Two lists with two, two things. And then we can go into A and B. Does that make sense? Yeah. So how can we do that? So Jane actually said the, the key word, again, this is, nothing about this is special. And she's, okay, go ahead. What are you typing in? Point. Point. No, 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 no. You no. said, what's the other magic word that you just said? What do you want to do to the list? Spread it into Yes. So split is the magic word. So let's see if we can have someone help us with that, right? Yeah. Google search, split. Yeah. Ooh. So those, those hit both the magic words, right? List and split. And what does he say? Split a list into two, into separate parts. 
Okay. So what does this guy take in? He says takes in a base list. Does everybody see that? So what's the what's a base list? The data that we want to break up is probably our centroids, right? And then what's this guy? Splitting index, right? If we just look at the emoji, see how he's kind of, he needs somewhere, again, lists have indices. So if I pull out a panel real quick, panel, see how these numbers on the left, those are called indices, right? Just in case you guys, indices, in, right? So index 0 is this point, index 1 is this point. So if you want to split at an index, what number, well, what's he asking for? If we hover here, you can tell he's asking for a number. You see the emoji? It says 7. He wants a number. See that black emoji? So what he's saying is, is give me an index. What I'm telling you is an index is 0 or 1 here in our, in our list. If we had four items, it would be 0, 1, 2, 3. Right? So what do we do? What, what number would we use here? He's asking for a number. Do we have any ideas of what number we'd use? Let's try one. How do we, how do we type a number in there? One thing we could do is just double click and put one. There's a trick for you. Now he's not red, or he's not orange anymore. That must be good news, right? So what do we have? Oh, yeah. Nice job, Jane. You got the magic word, and you got the magic number, too. If I did zero, what's going to happen? B will be two, and A will be nothing. If I do one, we get one and one. Everybody try that. Set it up exactly like I have. And then try and use that to make a line. Oh, wrong one. So you, you're so you've typed split, and you've grabbed this guy, but this guy's not the right one. Because he said, split a compound transformation into fragments. You know what that means? Even I don't know what that means. So you want split list, right? How are we doing, Jane? Oh, Jane, yeah. We got it. There's a line, right? And then we get to do the cool thing, if we really want to do it, is we could take one of these guys and move it, and the line kind of moves around with us, right? Can you do that, one link? Do you have the line? You cannot see a line. Do you have a script that looks just like this? Okay, come see. So it looks the same, but is the input the same? That's the question. Yes. You just have to click it. Remember, oh, oh, okay. you're in green mode, right? So one Ling couldn't see it because she's got this guy up here clicked. You guys see where my cursor is up here? And she's not clicking this. So she sees the same screen as me. But until she clicks this, she won't see it. But once you click it, then it's on. Then you can do the fancy stuff where you sort of move stuff around and it you know, moves around with you parametrically. We all good on that? Lily's got, okay, you guys, ladies, you all got it. Perfect. So we're going to delete this. Let's add this. Woo, 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 woo. Oh, there we go. So I'm, I'm going to do some housekeeping here. I'm going to put this, again, we said we want to start with putting in centroids. We want to end up spitting out a line, and boy, have we done it. There you go, line. You guys can clean up your scripts, make them look nice and pretty, and then we're going to move on. 
And I'm going to go back to our roadmap now, and we said we want to go from a line to a midpoint. So in essence, the next part of this script takes in one line, and it takes and it takes out. If you want to disconnect a wire, you just go right click, disconnect that, and I'm going to say this one is point. And that's my next step. Group. Our output ultimately is not going to be here yet, so we still have a few more steps. Okay, so we got a line, and we want to get down to the midpoint. If I sketch that on the screen, it would be probably right here, right? We know that that's where we want to head. Okay, we just did, in essence, the mechanics of what we did here. The mechanics of what we did here are both the same. So do the exact same thing here. What's the first thing you try and do? You need a tool, right? When you need a tool, but you don't know what it is, what do you do? There you go. So try. We had two steps, right? First things first, type. What are we going to type? What's the magic word here? What is it? What is it that we want? Let's go back to our center point. You, had, you, you, it was your idea. Midpoint, center point is what you had said, right? So those are the key words, maybe. So let's try. Those are two words that both mean the same thing in English. Let's see if they mean the same thing in Grasshopper. Center point. And mid point. I think it's one word, midpoint. Or maybe it's two words. Who knows? How do you know no already? You, it, it, you can, I say no, but how do you know? There is no such answer in the list. There's nothing that says literally midpoint or center point. But that's the thing, so you, you make a good point. There is, no pun intended. Uh, there is no, nothing here that literally says midpoint or center point. Does that mean that all of these are useless? Maybe not. Maybe Rhino and Grasshopper don't speak the same language. All right, so maybe we need to try something else. What was the other thing we can try to find this out? Again, maybe Rhino and Grasshopper call midpoint and center point something different. Lily's trying something interesting off the beaten path here. Just before you do that, just to solidify what we we're talking about before. Okay, this isn't helping us. This Google search right here is not helping us. What other Google search should we do now? Grasshopper3D.com. That's the easiest one. Midpoint. This is where humans will come to translate between English and... Uh, so let's just do the first one. Let's assume the first one's always the most popular. Maybe this might be a basic question, but I'm having trouble finding the midpoint of an inter of a curve. Let, don't worry about interpolate. That, that sounds exactly like our problem, right? Finding the midpoint is easy enough. Thanks, guy. The, use the evaluate curve with t set to 0.5 or point on curve component. All right, so he said evaluate curve with t set to 0.5 or point on curve. So there's two ideas there. What do we do? I'm going to do both of them. So I'm going to say evaluate curve. There it is. Evaluate a curve at a specified parameter. Well, that doesn't sound very logical to me. I don't know what that means. But he said t equals to 0.5, right? So he's already told me what to put in there. So that's good. And then what does this guy want? He wants a curve. Well, I have a curve. Hey, it worked. And without knowing anything else, I've gotten the answer for free from that kind gentleman online. What else did he say? He said, evaluate curve with T set to 0.5 or point on curve, which is the one I would normally use. So he'd say point on curve. And this one comes up. And this guy right here is, again, the same thing. There's no difference between these two. 
Do you guys see why I'm not trying to tell you all the different ways to find a center point of a curve? Because I could think of a few other ones right now that I could teach you just to get the center point out. Does it really matter? It doesn't. All that matters is, is that you know where to find the answers. Because no matter what, right now, what's between us and doing our jobs better is as simple as giving Grasshopper a lot, giving something a line and getting out a point. That's all we want it to do. It doesn't matter which one of these we use. Now, what Lily was doing that was interesting, so again, that's your has to be your thought process is first things first, make the plan. We've done that. Second thing, take the keywords of the plan, double click here, find them. You can't find them by hovering and checking it out. What do you do? Go to Google. There's one other thing Lily was doing that is interesting, is she was coming up here. So everything that, if I type in uh, midpoint, and all these things, they don't come here magically. They're all found up here as well. So what you could do is you could say, well, I need a tool that is related to curves. So you guys see where I am up here? I could type this. I could grab that guy, curve, and then there's all these tools related to curve, right? So I could say, I don't really know what, what I want to do here but maybe I want to divide it. Maybe I want to divide it. Divide curve into equal length segments. I don't know if that's right, but let's see. I don't know about that. Then I can come over here and actually look at the emojis. Which one of these emojis looks like they'd be the right emoji? Hmm. And the, our friend point on curve is there, right? Evaluate curve is there, right? All these tools are right there. So if you were clever and you did a little bit of research, not even clever, not if you're clever, you have to be clever to even get to this point because the thought process has happened. Your cleverness was here. Now it's just coming down to, can I take all my genius ideas and have the will to go look for the answer? That's really what it comes down to right now. Okay, so that's where we stand right now. We've gone from a line, uh, so let's, and this is a good skill. I'm in green mode, let's tell the story. So I took, I'm gonna hide these guys. I took those guys, I put them in Grasshopper. Then I found their centroids. Then I took their centroids and I drew a line between them. And then I took the line and I got the center point. And if I go all the way back to the beginning, there's, uh, my original. Now, is that looking like the centroid of all this? Yes. Let's see if Rhino agrees with that. That's the centroid. So if I say area or centroid, area centroid here. Ah, remember last week, Lily, we said, is this really the, the correct quote unquote definition of if you integrate both of these at the same time? Is that really where the centroid of this, these two shapes is? The idea of taking the line between the centroid of this one, so, right? So is this point and this point, is the midpoint between them the centroid? Rhino would say no. I think mathematically last week we were sitting here saying it probably isn't the centroid. It's probably a little bit, it's close. It's not like it's completely wrong, but it's, it's a question of now you'd be asking yourself, I've made this script, Medio, you said that uh, grasshopper and rhino they're so efficient but look at what it did look at what this script did it got the centroid off by 10 millimeters and now all my calculations are wrong this tool sucks right the fact of the matter is is our definition sucks we don't know how to do math back all the way back here at the beginning right we don't appreciate we haven't replicated the math that needs to happen right if that makes any sense does it matter in the grand scheme of things? Uh, distance is oh, off by big. Yeah, it's off by two meters. I don't know what the scale of this is probably wrong. It's off by two meters in something that is uh, 145 meters wide. Obviously, we're at the wrong scale here. So, 
just a percentage wise, it's less than 2%, right? 2% error in terms of where we place that. I think for the purposes of this exercise, right, so that we don't overdo it, right, let's say for now that we're happy with that, that that's good enough for government work and, uh, and that that suffices, right? Now we'll deal with making it better as we go forward. Let's just get a working concept going right now, okay? Do you guys understand what I mean? So right now, your script, you should save it. Let's say I'm going to save mine just to make sure. I'm going to save mine to my local uh, document. You guys should save it to uh, that area on the server. Okay? Q drive computational transformation facades or somewhere where you can access it for another day because we're coming to the end of our session here today. Um, and you should do yourself a huge favor and make sure that you have it clean like I have it. Right? So that next time we come here, that we're not wasting 15 minutes on getting our computers booted up, another 15 minutes on trying to remember where we were, right? another 15 minutes on remembering everything that we just did. So we only get 15 minutes of real learning in next time. We want to be clean here. This is the way your script should look. Okay. So if you have that, it also help you if you, you know, want to do, some, and you will need to do, if you want to get better, to do some practice. You'll need to do some practice uh, on your own. You'll have to try and maybe replicate everything we just did here today on your own. It's not the way you're going to be able to do your job is to have me sitting there and telling you pretty much exactly what to do. Okay? So let's go back before we break for the day and let's look at this guy. So this guy is uh, where we had started and where we still have to go. And I'm going to leave you hopefully with some questions in terms of what we're going to do next. So we have achieved up to here, right? So now if we go back, let's say, to, well, we know that the final port of call here is a moment of inertia calculation. And something that we had said, it's doing an integration. We kind of know what the math is, but we don't, let, we don't normally sit there and get out our integral tables and, and do it. The computer does it for us. Normally, the computer does it for us via what? You guys typing in mass properties or something like that in AutoCAD, and the, the computer does it for you. So, as a recap of today's lesson, we said it three times. If I went all the way back here, and I asked you, our last step, there's stuff that's going to happen in between here, where we, where we are right now, and here. But our last step is going to be guaranteed needing to do a moment of inertia calculation, right? So, you tell me, what are we going to do for the last step? You already have the, the tools to make the last step happen. What do you do? No, it's not a trick. What did we do all day today? We, what did we do when we wanted to get the centroid? What did we do when we wanted to go from two points to a line, to a midpoint? There you go. That's it. It's not a trick question. It's literally, we know right now, it doesn't get any more specific. The last step will be get a mass property of something. So what are we going to search? Don't, don't, don't be shy. Mass properties. And we don't get it. And you say, oh, this tool is stupid. What do we do? Grasshopper3D.com, maximize mass properties. You want to say how to use mass properties, how to get maybe mass properties. Ooh, what's this? Let's do the first one. Let's just pretend the first one's always right. I'm working to get a consistent contour shape and a pretty nasty model. Problem is that the curves don't always get a centroid when I use area component. Oh, it doesn't get a centroid when I get area component. Curves must all be planar for the area calculation. They're all planar. Curve area mass properties could not be solved. This is pretty complicated, right? And it doesn't sound like the kind of thing that we're looking for, but this one, area of surface with area mass properties. We see the word mass properties.
Again, that looks like gobbledygook. I'm, I know what it means, but I'm pretending that I'm not. I'm, I'm you guys, right? But then there is this thing, area mass properties. So let's just see here. Area mass properties. And I look here, and there's something that looks like what we had before, area, but this one's area moments. Solve for area moments of breps, meshes, and planar closed curves. And you know what would have been even better of a search is moment of inertia. Searching moment of inertia, because that's what you want. Area moments. Would it be possible to use the area moments command from Reiner to Grasshopper? But there is the key word. How do you get the area moments, or the moment of inertia? Area moments. And what does this do? It takes in a piece of geometry, and it will give you the area, the centroid, the moment of inertia, the error in that calculation, which might be useful, the secondary moments of inertia, radius to gyration. So just with the skills that we've developed already, you can see this idea of starting on paper, coming up with from first principles, the key words that you want to use, really compounded, that's the main part of what we have to do as computational engineers. Because if you don't do that, you won't be able to get anywhere, especially when you're first starting. Like, I've been using this for many years, so I already know exactly where all the buttons are. But look at how many buttons there are. Look at how many things there are. And by the way, there are hundreds more of these tabs that we could add. So just to learn buttons isn't what we're here to do. We're here to learn how to think and how to find the answers for ourselves. So this is where the thinking happens, over here. And the answers can be found once you have done the thinking, right? So separate from learning the coding. Do not mix up learning coding, which is this. This stuff right here is code. You don't get to see that it's what's happening behind the scenes, but there's code happening there. You're learning how to code. Do not mix up learning a new language with creating a new script, creating a new tool. This here has nothing to do, very little to do right now, with Grasshopper. This has to do solely with data and first principles. We could use this script right now, oops, cancel, but we could use this script right now as it is and script something in Dynamo, C Sharp, Python, anything. The language doesn't matter. When you want to apply that idea to the language, then it becomes issue. You uh, have it. I want to double click here. I want to type in moment of inertia. Actually, we get the answer. It just doesn't say moment of inertia, right? So you would maybe have to be clever and say area moments is mathematically maybe a better term uh, to use. It's more generic. But or you could just then your your next instinct should be hover, 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 hover. Maybe try one of these and say what does this do? Uh, this thing offsets a plane. Not sure if that's what I need. Then it's a go to, go to grasshopper3.com, type in some words, and then worst case scenario, it's come up here and sort of try and figure out, well, it's math, right? He must be doing math, right? Let's see if we can find it. Is it a polynomial thing? Is it a script? Should be math. Let's see if we can find it up here just to sort of get in the mentality of how stuff's organized, right? Because this Google search is nice because, you know, you don't have to randomly search through this. But if we didn't want to randomly search, I'd say it must be doing an integration, which is math, right? Uh, but I don't see it here. Well, it takes in a surface, so maybe it does that, and it's an analysis on a surface. And also I know that these guys, these emojis, m squared and m cubed, mean volume and area, and boom, look what's right next door to them. Area moments and volume moments. Do you guys see that? So three steps. First, after you've made your plan, first Google search in Grasshopper, double click, search your stuff. Number two, go to grasshopper3d.com, Google search again. Number, f uh, number, number three, kind of logically go through these options. Number four, come find somebody who is a colleague that you know can help and ask. And you'll be surprised how far you'll get just by following that standard procedure.
if you don't follow that and you don't have a plan, then there will be no surprise whatsoever that you don't make any progress in your computational engineering training because you won't have a guide. You will just be kind of going on there. You'll be going on Google and typing, how do I make a mullion moment of inertia calculator? Thing is, is you don't really even know what that means yet. There's a quote by Steve Jobs that says, everybody should learn how to code because it teaches you how to think. And once you have to start explaining this to a computer, what you'll realize is, is how much you take for granted when you tell a graduate engineer, just do this. How much thinking it actually requires them to take a couple sentences from you and actually do it. Once you've had to explain something very specifically to a machine, you'll be better at writing contracts for sure. Because you'll really be specific in everything you say. And I even caught you earlier. When I talk now, I talk way more accurately than years ago. Especially now because I work with you guys. And my first language was English. Your guys' first language was Guangdonghua, Putonghua, something like that. So I can't even speak English to you guys in uh, the way that I want to. Because it's not fair to you, right? In the same way, we can't speak the same language of computational engineering without speaking it correctly, which means saying things extremely specifically. Is it a list of points? Is it a point? What is it literally? Because if we don't speak the same language uh, as the computer, he won't do work for us, and that's what we're after. Okay? Are there any questions before we break for the day? That's where we stand. Make sure that uh, you know, you've you're saving this, so because next time we're just going to jump straight back in here, and we're going to develop this. At the rate we're going, it's probably going to take us maybe two or three more courses to get anywhere close to where we want to go. But this is the important part, is that we're not wasting time as much as possible. Uh, let's try and show up on time. Let's try and show up with at least having tried. I know Wang Ling was doing it. Try this example outside of class. Go back to where we started, delete all this, and see if you can replicate it. And then try and see if you can fill in the blanks before next class. It's the only way you'll make any progress. And this is a very succinct, easy example. So if we want this for our projects, I can make this for you. No problems. What we want, more than anything, is not to just make this for our projects. We want you to be able to make this and many other things for your projects. So this is all about you and your skill set. So make sure you put in at least one hour of playing around with this on your own without me sitting next to you and sort of pushing you along. Because that's the only way you'll learn. Any questions? I see most people have, have, have scripts that are working. Are we good for break for the day? Okay, ladies, thank you.